So when it comes to power stations, most of these can be charged multiple different ways. And a lot of them can be charged two ways at the same time to increase the charging to its maximum charging capability. But the single best way to be able to charge these is just to be able to plug them in to a 120 volt outlet. But what if you don't have a working receptacle? What is the second best way? Or maybe I should say, what is the second most reliable way to be able to charge up a power station? And what I think that could be is an alternator charger in your vehicle. And Blue Yeti has just come out with theirs. They call it the Charger One. And this is a DC to DC converter. So it'll take the 12 volts from your vehicle and it will increase that up to 50 volts and 10 amps so it can charge your power station with 500 watts. And the great thing about the Charger One is that it just uses MC4 connectors to be able to charge up the power station. That's the same connectors that's on your solar panels. And it, it makes this a universal charger. It can be able to hook up to any power station and be able to charge it through the charging port. And this is also fully adjustable. You can adjust the voltage to match the power station that you're hooking it up to. So some people may ask, what's an alternator? Well, it's basically like a little electric generator that runs off of your engine and it recharges your battery. And it also runs all of the electrical equipment in the vehicle while it's running. So in my truck, my alternator just happens to be like buried right down in here. So I really can't show it to you. But the good thing is, is we don't have to hook to the alternator because it charges the batteries. All we gotta do is wire up to the battery in the vehicle and we can get the charger one to work. So the way I'm gonna install the charger one is I'm just gonna mount it underneath the back seat in the truck. You can see this thing is not much bigger than my hand. It'll fit under there just fine. And then I can charge up a power station while driving down the road. But I could also charge it up with the car just parked here running in the driveway, just parked in the driveway and I could charge it. And the power station would be sitting in the vehicle on the seat, out of the weather while it charged. And I think it'll be, you know, we're gonna have to test it, but I think it could be the second most reliable way to charge a power station. You're not having to wait for good weather. You're not having to, you know, you don't have a five hour window of sunshine to be able to charge it. You can charge it anytime that you, you're running your vehicle. And I mean, I guess that's as long as you have a reliable vehicle to run. It's as reliable as your vehicle is maybe. So the hardest thing about this installation is figuring out how to run wiring from the battery back to the back seat, through the engine compartment, into the cab, to the back seat. And that's gonna be different on every vehicle. Every vehicle is gonna be put together a little bit differently. You're gonna have to route your wire a little bit differently. So everybody's just gonna have to, you know, figure out how to do that. Now, if you didn't wanna do that, you could probably just get the charger one and wire it up to a couple alligator clips, right? And you could just clip it to the, the battery like some jumper cables, right? And then the charger one would work with the vehicle running. Um, that would be like, I guess, one way to use it while it's idling, like in the driveway. But if you're wanting to run, run it down the road, you're gonna have to probably do a permanent install like we're doing today. All right, I found a path for my wiring. So at the back of the firewall, under those wiring connectors, I'm gonna have to adjust the light. So you can see there's a rubber plug right there. So I take this rubber plug out and behind it you see there's fabric and that's fabric inside of the vehicle. So I cut a hole through that and then I am right behind the glove box. So on this rubber plug I've cut a slit in that so that I can shove my wiring through. So here's the wiring that I'm using. This is six gauge wire and that's because the battery side it's going to be pulling high amps and on the output side of the charger, it'll be a higher voltage, lower amps. And the charger one can pull 50 amps from the battery. Well, it's actually pulling it from the alternator. It, it should only work when the alternator is going because it doesn't want to drain your battery, right? It's, it, it's only going to work when the alternator's going. The alternator actually makes a little higher voltage too. So Blue Yeti does sell like a wiring kit to be able to hook this up. It comes with some six gauge wire. It comes with a, like a 60 amp breaker, I think. And you could use their kit to hook this up. I'm gonna show you how to hook it up if you're outsourcing and using your own parts. So let's go ahead and get the wire in. All right, we are in. All right, you see I've got my glove box dropped down 
and I've got my wire coming through. I could, I had a hard time finding this, honestly. So what I ended up doing, I put a red wire through and I'm using that to help guide the wire. This red wire was way easier to find up inside of there because everything's black. So this would just made it easier. All right, you can see I've got my positive and negative wires going through the firewall and then they come out from under the dash and they come out over here and they're right here. And then on the side of this, there's actually a wire way anyway. So I'm running it with the rest of the factory wiring right along the side. And then I've got it coming out right here. And then I've got my two, you know, positive and negative wires here ready to hook up to the charger. So the wiring kit from Blue Yeti comes with a 60 amp breaker, but I believe it's an indoor breaker. It really needs to be mounted inside of the vehicle somewhere. So for me, what I ended up buying I bought this little fuse 60 amp breaker. This is a waterproof breaker, so it can be mounted in the engine compartment and it shouldn't be an issue. I bought this through, I think, O'Reilly Auto Parts. I'll put a link to it down below, but I just need to go ahead and get this mounted and we can start wiring it up. It's terrible to try to find a spot in an engine compartment to mount anything. I'm gonna mount it to the side of the battery box. Not too fond of it, but that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm going to take the charger one and I'm going to mount it to this part of the frame for the back seat. So you can see once we fold down the seat, it doesn't hit the charger one. You can see your feet probably aren't going to kick it either. So it's in a good spot. So the charger one did come with some accessories. So it does have the MC4 connectors that hook on the output side of it. It also came with some, I think four of these, these are six gauge ring terminals for you to hook up the battery and the breaker. And then it also came with six gauge ferrules. I think four of these to hook up. Then it came with some mounting screws and Allen wrench, stuff like that. So you can see I used some red electrical tape to identify the positive wire, but the ferrule that comes with the kit or with the charger one is, has color coding also. Luckily, I've got some of these ferrule crimpers that go up to six gauge. All right, we got our MC4 connectors hooked up as well. All right, you can see my 60 amp breaker on the side of the battery box. So we come from the battery through the breaker out to the charger one. You just lift up on that and the breaker is on. You can push this button, it'll flip out and that'll turn the breaker off. So all my wiring is zip tied down, all the trims back on. I think we are ready to start this up and test it. All right, you can see the charger one has a green light, it's solid, so it's booted up and ready to go. All right, we got our power station in the back seat. Go ahead and plug it into the charger. And I can see the green light come on. All right, you can see upper left-hand corner, 532 watts, 570 watts. It's charging, higher rate than I thought. So if you notice, the Blue Eddy charger didn't have any buttons or interface whatsoever because it is controlled by Bluetooth. So I've got the app on my phone and I'll put the screen up here next to me. And you can see the voltage of the battery, the alternator, 13.2 volts. And you see that it's charging with 55.9. It's actually higher voltage than what I thought it was gonna end up being. And I just selected the power station that I have for the perfect, I guess, charging parameters. But what you can do if you don't have a Blue Yeti, you can select the charging voltage and you have all these different models, but when you get to the bottom, you have custom and you can select custom, hit okay. So in here, you can see that it is charging at 56 volts. If you turn on pro mode, you have to accept a disclaimer that you might tear something up. When you go into here, you can select between 15 and 56 volts. So you can select your charging voltage to match it up for whatever power station you have. So totally customizable, can use it with any controller that has MC4 connectors. So overall, I think the charger is gonna be as reliable as your vehicle is, right? As long as you can charge your vehicle and run it, you can charge power station. Now needless to say, it's only 500 watts, 
But still, a lot of times when you hook up 800 watts of solar panels, you're lucky to still get 500 watts of solar coming in. So I just got a feeling that this could be a more reliable way to charge compared to solar panels. So I know a lot of people may be worried about that being hooked up to the battery, draining the battery, and then you can't start your vehicle. That would be a bad thing. So what I've done is I've turned off the vehicle. So the light on the Charger 1 is still blinking, but I hit the button on the Blue Yeti and it's not charging. You can see, not charging right now. So the Charger 1 is smart enough to know that the vehicle has shut off because the alternator actually makes a higher voltage. So when you turn your vehicle off, it saw that voltage drop a little bit and it knew to, to turn off charging. So that's a good thing. It's not gonna keep charging with the vehicle not running. So I'm looking at Blue Yeti's website and the Charger 1 right now today it is listed at $269 now that may be a sale price I'm not for sure but that's definitely cheaper than a set of portable solar panels so if you ended up buying a power station and you wanted an alternative way to be able to charge it I'd say that the charger one is probably the most budget friendly and it's reliable it's as, as reliable as your vehicle is as long as you can start your vehicle you can charge the power station now you we all know the solar's nice, it's free energy, but it only works when the sun's shining, right? So a lot of times when there's bad weather and you have a power outage, the sun's not shining, but at least the Charger 1 will still work in your vehicle. So it looks like a, a more reliable solution, a little slower charging possibly, but a reliable way to charge a power station. Well, I think that wraps up the installation of the Charger 1. Definitely a better way to charge in your vehicle. Before you could only use the 12 volt outlet, it would be like 90 to 100 watts. So this is at least five times faster. Definitely something if you're road tripping or RVing would be a good way to charge it as you're driving down the road. I'll go ahead and I'll put some links down in the description below if you guys are interested. But I think that's it for this video guys. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.